Hello, Maverick Traders. It is midweek update time. Joe with you here on the 16th of November. Let's jump into some market action. I've got two cents. I've got some ideas. I've got my opinion. Take it for what you will. Take responsibility for the outcome. So the markets continue to consolidate at their current levels. We're waiting for or looking for the next bullish indicator or news. The relief on inflation is great for sentiment. We are now faced with everything else. It just depends on what the next move is for these markets. So economic data came out today. We had an uptick in retail sales. Consumer is still super, super active, which is not good for inflation. And the household debt is at a 20-year high. Let's get into some of the trades that I looked at. Starbucks, WWE, AKRO, General Mills on the upside, all from this class. CRM, Toll Brothers, Toll Brothers, yes, folks. In neutral, I thought for sure a home builder would be on the downside, but it did gap up and it is showing some pretty good sideways signs. We'll take a look at it here in a second. So first off, let's take a look at the bullish side. This is AKRO, Therapeutics, Healthcare. Once again, it's interesting to see that the healthcare industry itself was one of the weakest sectors from Wednesday to Wednesday, but we'll look at that chart later on. What I like about AKRO, it's pretty obvious. It is a stock. It's moving higher. And it is above a resistance level here at about 45 that we set late October. So a nice pullback. The pullback wasn't too deep. A little bit lower than some of the lows that we or, or the consolidation area we'd like to see back in early October. But after this gap that it had the end of September based on earnings or some sort of event, it's been doing nothing but going higher. So sideways to up, absolutely. If you want to be more aggressive, that's great. Just make sure that the market becomes conducive to your direction. Just play it a little bit more reserved for now. That's my two cents. This is General Mills. This has been on our watch list. It's been on the upside and the sideways side for probably three, four weeks. So what I like it now is it is once again done one of these little hiccups below that 50-day moving average. It's moving higher. Now, today's action didn't really follow through. So if you're like me and you're a little bit more reserved, you might want to see this thing get above 80 before you get into it with a target of about 82 or upwards of that. And the reason being is because I'm a little bit reluctant on these markets. I have to echo what Corey said. We are still in a bearish trend on the long term. Put this on your watch list. If you don't see anything you don't like, you don't have to trade. I understand that. You don't have to trade. WWE, also one that I like. This has popped up, and it's got this slow march higher. This seems to really do well off of its lows. There's a lot of shadows here, right? Lots of legs where these where uh, traders have come in and bottom off the lows. Now, it doesn't mean this thing's going to break out and hit 100 anytime soon, but the glass is definitely half full. This is CRM, this is Salesforce. It looks a little bit more bearish. What I did think was cool about today's move is that we had a move substantially lower off of a reversal signal. This doji was actually a gap higher. So we gapped up yesterday, set a doji, came well off of our highs, and we gapped down and continued lower. Now, I would like to see today's volume a little higher than yesterday's, but that doesn't mean we can't get that tomorrow if and when, or when I should say, and if we break the 50-day moving average. If this falls below the 50 with a market that coincides or agrees with this, I would not be very, I would not be surprised if we had volume exceed the previous two days. Toll Brothers, it's a home builder playing the chart. It's interesting to see that this thing has parked itself between these consolidation levels of 48, 46, and let's keep a support level here at about 44. I just chose that because I like to do even numbers, right? So I got a 44, 46, 48 butterfly spread, which would be nice. I'm taking into consideration this whole range up here, which is actually between 50 and a true bottom of about, what do you guys want to call that, uh, 40, 46. So there's four bucks there that this thing could bounce around. Okay, CRWD, this is something that we've had on and off our bearish watch list for a few weeks as well. And I do love it as this beautiful bear rally. Up, decreasing volume, retesting resistance, at a moving average, it doesn't get any better than this. Now, now that I just said that, we've got a 70% probability this thing moves lower. 
but there is a 30% chance it doesn't. Now, Murphy's Law would state that the 30% chance is going to happen because I made mention of the 70% chance of this rolling lower. So just make sure that it comes in line and it gives you what you want. Or whatever options trade you're playing on this works when it comes to risk reward, you go out and throw it out there. Now here is one that came across good resistance back that it set in June. Basically retested it here mid-October. Remember folks, October was a 14% gain on average for the markets. This did not participate. In fact, it broke lower, it's come back, it's retest the $20 mark, and it could roll further down. Now, this is up, I'm gonna make mention of percentages. A lot of traders see this as, oh my gosh, it's an $18 stock. This is one that I can actually trade. I've got five grand, I've got 10 grand. I'm gonna go here and jump into it. I'm gonna buy the $18 puts, yada, 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 so on and so forth. Keep in mind that this was a 9.69% move. Volatility is where you find it, and unfortunately, it sucks because cheaper stocks are not necessarily cheap. When you get into something, that you get an $18 call that you think is going to go to 14 and you pay a 10 15% premium for it, all of a sudden, that $4 move, which is massive percentage-wise dollar amount, doesn't equate to anything because you are so leveraged. You guys need to focus on the percentages or the volatility of the underlying before you make any decision. See, I knew I would make a teaching moment somewhere in this class, even though it is actually pre-recorded. So it's just, here is MARA. I do like this as well. This is something that's been up and down on our watch list, but it was a beautiful confirmation of a move to the downside. I'd like to see a little bit more volume, but it is definitely breaking support. Next target is going to be somewhere down in this area, or if it hesitates where it's at here at eight bucks, this is that same problem I just got done screaming and yelling about, 12.5%. This is going to be super difficult when you're trying to split that bid and ask when it comes to options, options trading, vertical spreads, all sorts of combos, things of that nature. I'm going to go ahead and make a, make a statement here and say this. It's at this, this level for some of my traders that have those larger accounts, it would probably be best just to short the stock. Let's take a look at the market analysis now that we're here. So overall, it's this consolidation. The diamonds, the SPY, the Qs, all pretty much flat. The Qs down another one and a half. And it's like, geez, Joe, that is not flat. That's down one and a half percent. Considering what they did the last couple of days before this, um, we're flat. We're right where we were when we started come Monday. I'll show you the charts here. IWM down about 1.79, well, down 1.79%. USO and gold also being a little bit above a push and pull. Oil actually came down substantially, down 1.6% um, from where we're at uh, exactly from Wednesday to Wednesday. So let's take a look at the charts. SPY here. The SPY is at that resistance level. This is the conversation that I was having with you guys before you saw the charts. We're at this area here where it's like, well, where do we go next? We had this beautiful turn off of June, got a little bit lower than that. We got a little bit of head and shoulders, a little higher here, move back up. Now, if you guys are into your weekly stuff, yeah, we're a little bit above it. Let's redraw that. We're a little bit above it, but over the week, week to week, we are still in a bearish trend, right? This channel has broken out. It was beautiful bounce off of that higher range. But if we roll back into this area, we're still in the overall weekly bearish trend. That being said, I'm not rushing out to sell or buy anything because it is right at this level. Take a look at these last three days. And I, I, I'll show you guys here in a second when it comes to the other markets. But this is where we closed, open. Open, close, open, close, open, close. These last three days, gap up, gap down, trade up, trade down, trade up, trade sideways, trade all the way down, trade all the way back up, gap down, trade up, come back down. It's a consolidation with super, super high volatility right at consolidation levels. So I'm not getting anything that's really making me race out to be a bull or necessarily a bear. I am going to be pessimistic. I'll be up. I'll, I'll be, I'm going to show you guys here in a second. I'm a little bit pessimistic 
just because I just see there's a lot there we have to get over before we can get better. But nothing's telling me to go out straight up sell yet. Now, here's the diamonds. This is a complete different story. This has got this massive breakout to the upside, a pullback, beautifully shallow before it even came back to the moving averages after this crossover and has moved higher. This is actually threatening, folks. It's threatening August's highs. Nowhere near the other two markets. So we are definitely glass super half full, but super overextended. Where does it go from here? Well, if you're pessimistic, it's going to pull back to this 330 mark, the 325, the 320, which is below the 20. There's plenty of stuff here when it comes to bearish or pullback that this can hit. This is a stock, or excuse me, an area. There's only 30, the Dow 30 components, that you do not want to play the bearish style with. Now, if you've got some bulls in there, I just let them go. Just let them go. Let them play themselves out because there's plenty of bears out there to hedge this out if you want to. Now, here's the cues. The cues also participated in a pretty good move to the upside. This is I'm going to call this a double bottom. Let me let me draw this again because I want to get uh, let's get my pin out because I you know this pivot and this pivot to me is equal. So we have let's do that a move that is now broken above a consolidation area. So before between 260 and 280, I'm thinking bear bear bear, but you have these moving averages that are trying to get back together. And if this can sustain or stay above 280, take a look, folks, all the way back to June. If this can stay above 280 and consolidate and move higher, we've got something a little bit more glass half full. Now, this is all speculation because based on what I'm seeing fundamentally and economically, it's definitely leaning towards the more bare side. Doesn't mean I'm going to trade that way. So let's get to the economic reports. Our PPI is lower than expected, just like the uh, CPI. But we had a little bit of a blip up in, in Empire State Manufacturing. That's fine. We can ride that out. Retail sales is a different number. Retail excluding vehicles. Both of these numbers are higher than expected. As a consumer, we are still active. Sure, we have a short-term drop when it comes to the um, when it comes to inflation but as a consumer we're still active is that going to cause a problem moving forward we'll see housing starts permits i think those all go south existing home sales all go south leading economic indicators might be something interesting but i'm not going to put too much on it based on what i've seen in the most recent um, with the most recent events so my market outlook, usually I, I would ask you guys first, but this is, once again, we didn't do it in the live class because of some problems technically, technical issues, right? But what I have here is weekly, I'm expecting consolidation or a pullback, but take a look at my above 20, above 50, 20, 50 slope, everything's bullish. So I have to stay at least plus one. So I'm expecting a pullback in the SPY. And if we can't hold that 390, Level 385. I'll give it all the way back down to the 20-day moving average. I Seriously, about 385. If we can't hold that level, I have to turn right around and be pessimistic. And yes, guys, that's, not, that's outside of technical. That's a little bit more fundamental. So let's get into the sector analysis. What I saw was a pretty good bounce overall. Technology leading the way. Healthcare was the weakest, but if you take a look at the overall performance over from Wednesday to Wednesday, we are definitely showing a little bit of a bounce. I think the majority of this had to do with Friday into Monday. Monday up into Tuesday, we failed miserably off of Tuesday. Here we are at Wednesday going sideways, but if you take those Wednesday to Wednesday factors, we are up across the board, healthcare being the weakest. So let's take a look at it. Now tech did really well, but once again, it's pulling back to that 130 support level. Now this is that make or break line. If this can actually pivot at these areas, I'll draw a little deep, little lower than that 127 and a half. But if it can pivot somewhere here or where these with the moving averages cross, I will give it something more long term to the bull side. That's my outlook personally. However, keep in mind a lot of these technical companies projected lower, expected weaker sales, weaker you know, more problems, a slowdown in the economy. We have some of the larger techs already starting to lay people off. 
So are they going to create their own problem or do they see something we don't? I'm just playing it by the chart. On the weak side, it is healthcare. And healthcare, when you zoom in, doesn't look super weak. It's just the fact that it's not as strong as some of the other sectors. It's up against resistance that we saw in the middle of August. And I, you know, I like the crossover. I like the move higher on the 20 and the 50. I think that a consolidation or range bound would make more sense to me than an absolute bearish fall apart, unless there's some sort of bad news um, that comes with it. So sideways to up on the healthcare, maybe it's a little bit exhausted. We're in a market that is trying to figure out where it wants to go. So just keep, keep, keep all that in mind when you guys go out there and make a trade and still understand cash is okay. It's okay to sit there and do nothing. So this is more of a market update, sorry folks, than it is a midweek. Usually I would have my conclusion, we go out and take a look at some trades, but I did this at the end of the day because we had some technical issues. Hopefully you'll like it. So the bulls have pushed the markets above some key levels, which is awesome. And most of it's because the fear of inflation is now curbed, but there are still many other problems to worry about. So we'll see what the markets do with that. We're still in place with the bear market as we are at upward resistance areas. But overall on that weekly chart, this is just a drop in a pan. This is just a, hey, great. There is one less thing that can kill us out there, but there's still a whole bunch of stuff we're worried about. So the sentiment is now what? Earnings results are not the best. That hasn't changed. Even companies that beat projected earnings or expected earnings are sh seeing slowdowns or worries in the future. E economic data, debt high. Sure, let me write it up to the fact that housing is, house prices have increased 20 to 30% on average over the last year. Keep that in mind. That is a massive surge or panic into housing. So I'm going to just chalk up the debt that, the, that uh, individuals have to their mortgage. If that's not true, then we're into something a little bit more ominous. The consumer is still active. This could be delayed. Let's take a look at retail sales next quarter. We know that uh, some of these can be delayed. But if we are not curbing spending, then inflation can't come down at the rate that we think it will. My two cents. All right, folks, usually I jump into the markets and we see what you're doing, but I don't have that luxury because of some problems or issues. I apologize for the technical difficulties, but we'll talk to you next time. If you guys want to post some trades, please get onto our forum and do so, and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks, folks.